Hey everyone, how are you? I am here with my good friend and student that studied over here in Sfat now, what, three years ago? Uh, Dana, she's going to introduce herself in a minute, uh, but she didn't just learn in Sfat three years ago, she continues to learn in Sfat. Uh, she's actually a student of Liv Kabbalah, uh, premium student, and, um, and I have the honor over here to, uh, to talk to her a little bit about Kabbalah and past lives. So I'm going to pass the floor to Dana to kind of introduce herself a little bit. By the way, just quick intro from my side is that she is a TED uh, speaker and she's an author and she's a healer. Mm -hmm. And so I'll let Dana take the floor mm -hmm. and just introduce herself. Thank you. Well, it's super fun to be here and it's super fun to be your student. So I'll just say it like that. Um, I'm a hypnotist and I specialize in working with people with trauma and illness and how trauma basically, if it's unresolved emotions from our past, you know, memories, um, how it can create distress, physical distress in the body. So that's what I'm known for. I also do a lot of public speaking. Um, and I also do, which is not something I speak about a lot, but I do a lot of work with past lives, which is something we might get into here today. Yeah. I remember you asked me that, like three years ago when you were first getting into uh, the healing profession and, that, and talking about past lives, how does that work? Is that allowed and whatnot? But can you just give us like a little bit of an intro on, on how you got interested in uh, hypnosis in general and like what was the, the journey? By the way, I'm going to link up the TED Talk on this so you'll see the full version of this, but just like quickly. By the way, hi, Joanna. For uh, Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. And uh, what yeah. else? Okay, great. So in general, I never thought I'd be a healer. I never thought I was never in my frame of reference to want to work with people in this capacity as a hypnotist. Um, it's never even something I have thought about. Um, the world of hypnotism was just, it's not even that it was abstract to me. It was just nothing. I was not in my world. So I came to it. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a weird, like, yeah. hypnot like it's like the clock or something in yeah. front of your face. Exactly. There was no interest on right. my end at all um, until it became a necessity. And it, it is the thing that I give credit to, to really saving my life. Mm -hmm. This specific treatment is what saved my life, brought me back to life. And um, long story short, I was nearly killed in a car accident about eight years ago now, actually to this month. Um, so this is my rebirth uh, wow. month anniversary. Yeah. So you have to make like a special like. I do. Sunda yeah, I do. I do recognize it as a rebirth, a uh, as a miracle for sure. And this accident was definitely a miracle. And I acknowledge it as that. Um, even my brother said, you know, he saw the car, what it looked like. And it was a little bubble for me to be in. It was all around me. Yeah. Oh so it was very devastating. And I had to learn how to walk and talk again. And I'm very fortunate because a lot of people that are even in little accidents, like little fender benders, if they get a little bit of a shock, um, if they withstand shock on their body, the body remembers. And so just even if it's something minimal, um, the body next time it exhibits stress, um, emotional stress, some, some type of stimulus, because it had some hit or anything before, the stress just goes directly there. So that's kind of how it becomes quote unquote disease or pain or chronic There's pain. There's memory inside memory. of us, like our DNA, sort of like on a computer, everything is stored over that's there. That's it. So our brain is just like a, a, a brilliant computer um, and we don't really access it as we should. And we, my biggest newest advocacy um, is that we all should learn ourselves how to be, how to process our own emotions, how to be our own healers, and even like to have five techniques in your toolbox to process your own emotions the moment they happen, which is my newest advocacy. But long story short, what happened was- Why is that if I could just say, like we react very quickly. We have an emotion, like for example, like um, Dana and uh, her, uh, and her future uh, fiance uh, got a little lost coming to us. And so I, I would think like with, with ways not taking you, you're like stressed out a little bit, mm -hmm. but you took it super cool and relaxed and just being able to just uh, mm -hmm. process that. Mm -hmm. So not to get so freaked out, even though like, 
what's going on? Da, 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 da. Like, how do, we, yeah. how do we do that? So there's a number of ways to do that. And it, it requires a little bit of discipline and a little bit of um, just knowledge of what to do. I mean, even just simply in that case, it could be a, you take three breaths, you know, and you realize that it's not such a big deal. Being in the present moment, I think, is, um, I think this might sound really uh, a little bit bold to say, but I, I hey, think... Hey, Tammy, thank you for joining. Sri, how are you? Hi, everyone. Um, we're going to take questions, by the way, on this. So if you guys are uh, ready, uh, type, type them in. Yeah. Okay. So I have a belief also that, um, and this might put me out of a job, but the need for treatments or therapy in the future might be, you know, put out of touch just because and if medicine, mm -hmm, if we learn how to process our own emotions, if we learn how to be our own healers, which there's, you know, a number of ways in which we can access our emotions, place them in the body, where are they coming up? Um, what I like to do is I regress myself. You know, if I ever have a bit of sadness or anxiety, I take myself back to the origin of where it began and you dissipate it. You dissipate the emotional charge from the beginning. So therefore, and for me now, I've been doing this, you know, six years now, um, I can regress myself and within 10 minutes, I just like completely cleared <laughs> wow. everything that I've been feeling. Yeah, because um, emotions are energy in motion, what I like to call them. It's just um, the subconscious mind sending a signal you know, if it's anxiety, maybe you're feeling threatened. If it's this, maybe, you know, you're feeling shut down. So that's a deeper technique, but there's many different techniques you can do on the spot in the moment. So anyway, to finish the, the first part of the story was um, after my accident, I had PTSD. I had very severe trauma and nothing worked for me therapy wise, just, comment, you know, um, just, you know, cognitive therapy and stuff like that. It didn't do much for me until I found a trauma therapist. And I didn't know that her specialty was hypnosis. Had I known, I probably would not have gone to her. It was a last resort. Yeah, I didn't know she did hypnosis. Um, but someone recommended, to, told me that this woman saved her life. So I was on the brink of not being okay. And I found her and she found me in the darkest moments. And she brought me up um, literally through these techniques of just cleaning up, you know, the shock of my body, cleaning up the How trauma. How long did it take? So my trauma was about a month and a half, like cleared my PTSD. Um, and my wow. depression was about two months and then um, my anxiety was about three months. And within that period of time, I became not only just functional as a human, but I started thriving again. I just went straight back into work and yeah. So she took a broken little girl and, and brought me back to life. And it, it's um, healing doesn't have to be hard and doesn't have to take a long time. So that's the general wow. gist of the beginning of the story. Wow. <laughs> well, I could just say from, from, a, from a Kabbalah kind of uh, view on this is that um, the, the Arizal, who is buried not so far from here, lived over here in Sfat, wrote a book called The Eight Chaim, The Tree of Life. Mm -hmm. And why is it called The Eight Chaim, The Tree of Life? Well, most philosophies, religions have this paradigm of the tree. But when we look at a tree, we don't see the majority of the tree. The majority of the tree, the most important part of the tree, in fact, is what is hidden. And it's in the form of roots, which the roots are really the whole reason why the, the outcome of the, of the bark, of the branches, of the leaves, of the fruit, etc., all happen. It's all because of those roots. So those roots come in many different forms. They come in forms of, um, so for example, that's why we can't judge others by different actions that they may take because we don't understand where their roots are really from. And according to the Ariza, we may have someone who's more on the right side, who's more chesed, who's more on the left side, who's more gvura, who's more kind, kindness or more strict or whatever. But then understanding the roots even on a deeper level that it's our makeup, where we grew up, how... Um, uh, how we are more tended or wired to be, but then we go a step further and we go back to even what we call past lives, mm -hmm. which the Ariza was showing uh, Dana and Shmuel this. Uh, they, they came to us for Shabbat. Uh, the book of Gilgulin, the book of reincarnations of the Ariza. He has a whole book kind of like detailing 
what are these past lives? And so there's a famous book, Brian Weiss, that wrote, uh, he was, he was a, um, an atheist, I believe, a psychiatrist, didn't believe in God. But then in his work of hypnosis, it took him back to where? It took him back to someone's past life. And he was like, whoops, what went on over here? Where are we going with this? So did you have experience with past lives with, with patients? Mm -hmm. And what was that like? So I've done so many past lives now. Whoa. Yeah, I do them quite often. Have you done your own? Yeah. I've seen okay. like 15 of my own. Okay. I'm not kidding. Yeah. And it's funny because I She's also- She's seen 15 mm -hmm. of her past lives. Mm -hmm. I also grew oh, up boy. in a secular family, completely not spiritual. And it's interesting. I, I, I'm still, um, I'm still, uh, what's um, the word? I'm hesitantly spiritual. You know, I, I, I'm- Hey, Asher. Yes. Yeah, so I, I- I'm spiritual because of things I've seen and, and past lives is part of that experience where it's just beyond imagination. So a lot of people ask, well, maybe I'm making this up, you know, maybe, you know, I'm just kind of coming up with this stuff. But in reality, first of all, if it's real or if it's not real, okay, the treatment in and of itself is separate. So just like you would go into childhood to get to the seed, the root of where, you know, sadness began. You do the same thing with past lives. Um, so generally speaking, when I do past lives, for example, if I'm working with someone with depression and every single angle of childhood and, and different uh, hypnotic techniques are not alleviating and not doing enough of the work, they're feeling a little bit better, but not full in relief. It's interesting, but going into a past life sometimes sparks the feeling, you know? Wow. And yeah, it's the seed wow. of the seed. Meaning you could be with, you could be treating someone mm -hmm and there's no reaction but all of a sudden you go back to mm -hmm. past life and they're and like that's where they find they're feeling. like bawling yeah wow and you know it's interesting because when i first started doing past lives again i was secular i didn't really even care so much about spirituality now i'm a more spiritual person and now the work i do is more leaning towards that but when i first started it was just technical you know this technique works for this trauma this technique works for this type of you know weight loss or it was just math now it's like artistry and it's really, you know, creative and, and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's actually a fun healing process. Wow. You know, and people think healing has to be difficult and hard and, and really gruesome and getting in there. And even if trauma comes up in hypnosis, it's like you're watching a movie. You know, you might see something that you don't. That's why a lot of people are scared of hypnosis because they don't want to go and see something that is going to scare them or they kind of repress. They don't want to go there. But in reality, you see it like a bird and you go in and it's like, you're not reliving it, you're reviewing it. And the whole idea is to open it, to kind of clear it out, the emotional core, uh, clear it out and then close it. Mm -hmm. So your psyche now, your, your subconscious mind had one way of thinking of something, okay? This is your experiences growing up, your, your thought process, your, your behavior, this is who you are. Now we opened up a little more room so now the subconscious mind's a bit confused because it had this one way of thinking and now there's a little more light. So it's like, oh, it just literally instinctively in that moment starts creating new behavior patterns because there's wow. a little more light. So yeah. it's positive. In other words, it's, it's transformed from being a negative it's view on the world, world mm -hmm. which takes the emotions yeah. to kind of like viewing things and reacting to things in a certain way. Yes. Whereas if, if we go back to the core, mm -hmm. to the roots, so then everything trickles down and yeah. a person has a totally new way and they're basically a new person. A new person, each session. That's amazing. It's amazing. That is so cool. So we're upgrading the computer. We're upgrading the file folders because let's say something that would initially make you sad. Hey, Malib. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name, but thank, thank you for joining. And by the way, uh, if you have questions for, for Dana, like type them in, jump in, please. Yes, okay. feel free, anything. Um, so the interesting thing is, yeah, in that moment when you go to, because I look at it again as a computer with file folders. So if there's a stimulus in this moment that makes you sad, why does it make you sad? Because you have certain, um, a certain file folder of similar experiences that you have to function in the world. You know, you can't analyze every moment, every five seconds and say, you know, you can't consciously be with things every moment. So you have to have the functional folder, which is the subconscious. Brush your teeth. You know how to do it. You know, you don't have to think the mechanics of every single thing. So 
it's that way with all of our thinking because we just have to function. So sometimes things that are misaligned and are creating dysfunction are just like that, just be like that um, until you go in and upgrade. So when you upgrade, um, the subconscious mind now has a new um, positive folder. Positive folder. Yeah. Sadness, a new sad stimulus doesn't exactly have to attach to the old file folder. It now has a little bit more light and a little bit more space for reacting positively or responding rather than just being stimulated just like that. Hmm. So it's really upgrading the whole thing. So past lives is the origin of the origin, the seed, 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 seed of um, your experience. And wow. there's, there's a yes. whole other topic of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a, there's a class on that on, on the site um, on reincarnations, which I did. And um, all I could say is just like scratching the surface of past lives. But can you maybe go into mm -hmm. maybe an experience of the past life mm -hmm. that you've had with someone? If you don't, if yeah. you don't mind, obviously not sharing their name. I, but I can like, tell you my own because then okay, you know wow. I, I'm exposing my own. <laughs> I don't have to um, affect anyone's privacy. Um, so I've, like I said, I've seen about 15 on my own. Wow. Yeah. And there's some that are more significant than others for some reason. Like, for example, if I were, because I can now actually regress myself into past lives. Wow. Yeah. Which I wasn't able to initially, but wow. now I kind of can. And I can go there kind of immediately, which is cool. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, like, like it, how long ago? How long ago was that? So, I've probably been able to do my own past life regressions on myself because I used to have other people do it for me, like colleagues and stuff like that. Now, um, Probably about a year ago, I've started to be able to do it on my own and go into my own past lives. Yeah. So it's, what's interesting about past lives is it's, de it's dependent on the topic. Okay. So we have, if you believe in this and, you know, um, I know you do, that we have our tikkun in this world, which is, you know, our spiritual rectification, why we came back in. So our past lives are the biggest reason of what we're trying to quote unquote rectify, you know, the resolution of our soul, in my opinion, and from what I've seen is like different soul aspects. It's like, I'm not the whole soul of a past life or a whole soul of this past life. It's like, I am aspects of each. And I see that even in the work I do, I'm aspects and I'm the collective of these different aspects. That's exactly what the, I don't know if you read that, but that's no. what the Arizal says. Really? Yeah. So he says that there's actually nefesh, mm -hmm. ruach, uh, uh, ruach, um, neshama, and so on. Each one we're supposed to actually rectify and sort of like uplift ourselves up mm -hmm. until we get up to the highest level, which the Arizal says is the level of Adam. Mm. Adam is, is our highest part of our soul which goes all the way back and to Amazing. that. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I have to read this Yeah, book. It's, it's, it's in that class, by the way, on, on, really? on the site. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to definitely watch it. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. The healing, what I always say about why this type of healing is interesting and important is because it brings you back to your essence. So that's why you heal, because you come back to yourself, and that could be the Adam thing. Mm. You know, you come back to who you are without these filters of trauma. Or filters of the stories you built upon yourself that aren't you. It's amazing. Yeah, and so that's the healing. There was a uh, tzaddik called called the Chose of Lublin mm -hmm. that was a student of Rabbi Limelech of Lizhensk. So after the great tzaddik Rabbi Limelech passed on, mm -hmm. he left all of his virtues or powers, soul powers, to his students. So the Chose got the power of sight. So he's able to see. So they say that when he first got this power of sight, he saw someone. And he saw him in this life, and he saw him in the life before, mm -hmm. the life before, the life before. He had the eyes to see that. And then he went, like, it's almost like a domino, like going, yeah. you see that mm -hmm. quickly. And then he went all the way back to where he saw Aleph Dalid Mem, Adam. Wow, that's it. Because we are that. <laughs> we are that. We are the generations. That is our seed. So Adam is our seed. So, oh my God, I have to tell you something. Okay, so I generally don't say all this stuff publicly because a lot of people think past lives is weird and, 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 and even hypnosis is weird. And I'm also here to kind of break that because it's not weird. And our brains have the capacity to do brilliant, beautiful things and we should access it and we should all learn how to access it. And what, like 95%? How much of and our mind is not used? Barely right? nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. And we think our consciousness our, and our analyzation 
our putting the puzzle piece together is our brilliance when in reality our creativity is our brilliance you know mm. and being so true, being yeah. open to um something beyond yourself is our brilliance you know when we're and that hypnosis really opens that up because you're going into alpha level brainwave you're going into kind of, kind of this meditative state where you're just ready and open to listen and see that's it that's all it is it's like a meditative state that allows you to recall memories and be more open to listen and see beyond your perspective brilliant limited perspective limited perspective so yeah. this just opens you up opens you up opens you up Okay, so I had a meditation. I was actually at the, the Western Wall. Um, wow, how long ago? This was maybe a year ago. I don't remember. And so now, because I used to go to the Western Wall, and like I feel it, I cry, and like I pray, but now I go to the Western Wall. <laughs> it's a bit weird, but I have like these meditations. You know, I have these like visualizations come. And also through healing, you do open up, you know, those abilities. So now it's, it may sound weird or whatever, but I do feel more. I do see things more, and I, I kind of have those you know, gifts, whatever, psychic abilities, I guess you'll call it, which also I, I never really talk about, but since we're here. So I went to the, the Western wall and I put my hand on it and all of a sudden I had this, this meditation come and it took me, it was like a, a braid. Okay. It was like a braid of veins. Okay. And then all of a sudden there was this water coming down and it took me into my past lives. Okay. And then all my ancestry all the way, all the way, all the way down these like veins into Eve. Whoa. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, I had this visualization and I was like, wow. I was like, this is, this is healing all the way, all the way down to the, literally the beginning. And what I, after I left, I felt alive, you know, Whoa. I really felt alive, but I felt like, um, there was this, the healing of the woman's history, you know, and it, I, it's not like I, I meant for that to happen, but it just kind of happened. And like you said, going back to Adam, because that is healing. When you go literally back to the, you're, wow. you are just soul. So can, can I just tell you that that place of um, the Western Wall or the Mid Temple Mount is the place that it says Adam and Eve were born? Wow. Did you know that? No. Yeah, that, it says that, that Adam was, was created from the place of his atonement. So mm -hmm. the future atonement, the Mizbeach, the altar, is the place where he was born. So Isn't Adam and Eve. Yeah. That's, that's pretty wild. Wow. Yeah. What did Eve look like? So I can, <laughs> it's just Eve. I don't know. Yeah. You know it but was, it was more of a feeling it was probably. A knowing. It was yeah, a it was feeling. A knowing. Yeah. But it was, wow. and it was literally within, you know, two minutes, I just felt like this water going down and doing this clearing and, and cleansing of all female, you know, ancestry all the way down to Eve and that's never happened to me before so that was really interesting and it's wow. interesting that you said that that's it is all the way back so past life is your your history you know your yeah your history yeah I hope that's not too abstract for um, everyone that is, no that that is like fascinating and yeah. and um and so I, you know it's interesting because the past lives are not things that we know about and not, we're not supposed to know about it. It mm -hmm. says in Deuteronomy, it says, that things that are hidden are for God. Hey, Michael. And the things which are revealed are for us to see. So we don't know what, are, what we're not supposed to know. And what we're supposed to know, we're supposed to know. Mm -hmm. So I guess, like, my, my question is, is that we're not supposed to know about past lives, really. I mean, the great caps, the Arizal, used to, here in Sfat, used to just be able to look at someone and, and tell them, you know, like three past lives ago, uh, you know, you did this and whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to do that in order to fix them. So my, my question too, and I know this is, that's totally like what, what you're about, mm -hmm. is that the difference between a, uh, a legit thing of why you're exploring this versus, you know, some... You know, I don't know, I don't know what they do, the tarot things, right. and I, I'm not, I don't know, but that's totally not kosher. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we, um, how do we, how do we keep it exactly? So, that's a great question. Yeah. It's interesting, because that's exactly the question I asked you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 so I just. So, Rabbi Cohen, my teacher, a, a former teacher of mine, is still, as well, a teacher of mine, um, that I learned a lot from, and when I was first getting into past lives, um, because when I first started being a practitioner, I was only childhood like that was it 
and I would ask, I, and I would ask a number of people that I met um, that were also rabbis and, and different practitioners. I'm, I'm like, is this ethical? Because I'm not trying to play God. You know, God forbid, I'm not trying to do anything. Um, so the idea is, okay, so the pursuit isn't spiritual, okay? It's literally going on the mental and emotional plane, all right? So the idea is that you're not supposed to look just just to look, you know, you're supposed to look because it's going to spark some sort of healing. Um, but it is, you know, it's when I first started doing this work, I did have the question, is this okay? Is this work okay? Because I'm not trying to meddle in anyone's spiritual path, you know? And I had, um, sometimes what I say is like this, if someone comes to me and asks me to do something, for example, like let's say I see an alcoholic on the street, and I know that I can help them heal their addiction. It is actually unethical for me to go to the street, grab his hand and say, I'm going to heal you. That's not okay because he has his spiritual path. He has his path. He has whatever he has to learn and whatever he has to do. It's not okay for me to meddle in his life. If that same person came to my office and said, I need help. Can you help me? Then we have in that moment made an agreement that we were meant to meet on the spiritual path. Yeah. That is kind of where my, um, my ethics lie, you know, and generally speaking, I don't really do much past lives unless it's quote unquote technically needed. Like for example, that person that had depression, that everything we did, where do we go and we die? See, I don't know. These are the questions I don't know, but I love that question. Yeah, Mike, Michael. <laughs> Maybe that's a rabbit question. Yeah, Michael, uh, that's, um, <laughs> well, um, that's, yeah, that's an intense question there. Where do we go? But for sure, heaven, Michael. Uh, but that's an in-depth question. But um, let's save that maybe for, maybe for a, another, another, another one of these uh, sessions. But like, you know, it's, th this is more like where we're at when we're alive. And I think that that's kind of like what, what I was asking. It's more about us in this lifetime. It's less about what we were in past lives. Yeah. It's more about how do we optimize and how do we become the best person yeah. in this lifetime. So, exactly. and it's not, and it's not about exploring things for the, just for the, like you're saying, exactly. for the curiosity, for the spiritual trip that, yeah. you know, you may have or whatever. It's about how do you become a better person in yeah. this lifetime? And so it's, it's all about how you could study, how you could learn, how you could learn from your mistakes, how you could connect, how you could pray better, how you could become a better human being, more charitable, more giving, more benevolent, be more godlike in this lifetime. And sort of like it's not, doesn't, it doesn't matter what happened because yeah. what, what, what happened happened and it's like what we have right now. Mm -hmm. So I guess if I could just maybe like, you know, reiterate what Dan was saying is like it's really about a healer. She's a healer that's kind of like helping people in this lifetime right. that this person agreed to have this um, connection. And uh, uh, sh she wants to know too. Um, I, sh I mean. I would love to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I will mention one thing on that. What I see with past lives, which is interesting, where do we go when we die? His question. Um, um, what I see, which is interesting, and also just to summarize past lives, I'll only do it, again, I won't do it for someone's spiritual trip. Yeah. Like if someone comes for curiosity, I tell yeah. them straight away, this is not what I do. Um, if there's something, he, like a lot of physical ailments as well, they come from past lives. Mm. So, and that's a whole other topic. Wow. Um, we probably have can go for hours on yeah, this. Yeah, 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 for so sure. So maybe another time. But that being said, um, where, where could people find you? Um, yeah, um, they can find me on Facebook. They can find my website, um, which is danapaitre.com. D a n n a p y c h e r dot com. Um, I have a lot of lectures on YouTube as well. Dana Paitre, you can just you know look that up. Um, you know the typical social media, even though I'm not the best at you know, keeping up with social media, but I'm around um, and people can always email me and stuff like that. Um, so what I've seen when it comes to a past life treatment, just in general, when I see them go through the process, the healing 
component of past life. Like, why do we even do it? So we have lessons to learn in this life. And so the reason, the ultimate reason to even do a past life is to learn those lessons. So mm-hmm. you have the idea of that. So what happens is in a past life, um, we actually, this might sound funny or a bit out there, but we go through the death process yeah. and we go up to God. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of hear or feel the messages. And in that moment, that's when your psyche can finally release it. And you don't have to continue those patterns because you finally learn the lesson. So the reason we have certain patterns in life is because we're going to do it and do it and do it until we learn the lesson. So this is learning the lesson, therefore you kind of upgrade your consciousness. That's really the only reason to do it. And that's why it has such an in, in, um, intent and potent healing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you go up, from what I've seen, the people that I work with, they do actually go up to God, they go up to source, and it really feels like, I, I told you I had a number of past lives. It actually feels, you feel elated. You mm. really do. When you when go you, back. When you pass on. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to say like, listen, you know, a lot of this might sound very abstract and stuff. It's just things I've seen and things I work with in my own experiences. But it's, it's a beautiful process. Um, and again, generally I do childhood because it's enough. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> wow. So... <laughs> Yeah, so here's just like a, like they say, like a little tidbit, of, you know, on uh, on this. Um, maybe I mean, maybe we'll kind of like do this again, maybe with a with more warning, kind of like, and uh, sure. and maybe see and talk more about the hypnosis level of it, of how you know how it actually works. How it actually works, yeah. So. Okay, so thank you so much, Michael. I hope that set your set your mind at ease. Uh, um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for uh, for joining, and uh, wishing you many blessings. And uh, and uh, thank, thank you, Dana, so for being here. Yeah, thank you. And regards and great vibes over here from Tzfat. And uh, and yeah, and we'll be in touch. Hi. Many blessings, guys. Bye. Thank you.